I should note in the previous examples, we used Excel functions that we manually created to generate summary statistics or univariate statistics. Now, if you've used uh, Excel before for univariate statistical analyses in different classes or a different work context, you might be familiar that there's other ways to accomplish this. Perhaps the most common way is the data analysis tool pack that's available in Excel, and it's a great tool. If you don't have it installed on your particular version of Excel yet, just Google how to install it. It's very easy to do. To illustrate uh, how we could use the data analysis tool pack to replicate the same thing that we did in example one, we could actually open up the data analysis tool pack, select that we want to do descriptive statistics, select the input range, which includes the header. So in our case, uh, O column here is where I have the subjective knowledge measure. You would select wherever yours is if, it, if you've moved it. Notice that the variable is organized in a column. My labels are in the first row, so the name of my variable. I want to put the results into a new worksheet. I'm asking, asking for summary statistics. I'm actually going to get a confidence interval for the mean estimate. That's new and nice. And the kth largest and kth smallest is my percentile. So I'm going to see the 20th and 80th percentile based on what I set here. When I run this, the results would look like this. Now, the sum is completely meaningless here. Summing up all of the subjective knowledge scores of our 230 people tells us nothing. So we definitely wouldn't want to report that. Many of these summary statistics that we get out of the data analysis tool pack might not make it into our final reporting, right? Just because it's there in Excel, we, the analyst, have to make a good judgment about whether it's useful for a final report. And also, there are just way too many decimal points. On a five-point Likert scale, Reporting things to the eighth decimal point is not providing any meaningful precision. I note here that maybe to the third decimal point is appropriate, but in reality, we just stick to, to the first or second decimal point for these types of scales when we're reporting. There is one little bonus here that we get that I didn't show you how to do earlier. We do get a confidence level estimate for our average. So this is our average, 2.86, but of course it comes from a sample. So this confidence level here represents the level of precision right, and certainty that we have at 95% confidence plus and minus that we have for this particular average estimate. So here we could say, on average, respondents tended to neither agree nor disagree that among their friends, they were the ones who knew a lot about craft beer because the mean is 2.86 and a three meant neither agree nor disagree per my code book. So now that I uh, demonstrated to you the data analysis tool pack way of doing this, you might ask, hey, wait a second, that was you know, a little, there's a little trickiness there, but it's way easier than maybe setting up all the different functions myself and reporting them. So why don't I just always use the data analysis tool pack? Now, first of all, that's absolutely fine. If you have a way that you like to do your descriptive statistics in Excel, no problem whatsoever. However, I think there's some limitations to using the uh, data analysis tool pack for simple descriptive statistics. First, it can get a little clunky when you're trying to run it for multiple variables at once. Um, if you actually set up your functions in Excel, the way we do in the earlier examples, it's actually easy to drag those functions across different columns to set up your statistics. Much more important, and unfortunately not something that I can really make you appreciate here yet, is that when you use the data analysis tool pack, all the statistical values that you get are flat. What I mean by that is, 
those numbers you see in the results are not functions. They're just numerical values sitting there isolated. It's usually bad practice in Excel to have flat statistical values when you could have them built up in functions. Uh, later, when you do much more advanced analysis in Excel, which we don't show here, it's very important that your all of your values that are computed are referring back to the original raw data. Uh, that data might be updated through new updates to the survey, like you collect new data, for example, and you want all of that stuff to automatically update. Um, the data analysis tool pack, because it does sort of this flat analysis and separates the results from the underlying data set itself, uh, that's not nearly as appealing. So it's kind of a limitation of doing it this way. And finally, I do think for people new to statistical analysis and reporting, uh, sometimes the data analysis tool pack approach can create some bad habits. It generates a whole giant batch of summary statistics for every single variable, but it makes absolutely no discrimination between whether you're dealing with a nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio level variable. And that tends to lead to people developing bad habits. Because the analysis tool pack does the analysis, sometimes new students think that it's okay and appropriate to report all of those statistical values, and that's definitely not the case. It's important that we carefully discern and think through which summary statistics are appropriate for us to report.